Hallelujah. And I would like to use a title for, from this passage. So close. To the promise. So close. Just look at your name and say, you are so close. So close. To your promise. Look at somebody else and say, you are so close. So close. To the blessings of God. Because it gives us some lessons. 
And I just come, glory to God, to remind us. Glory to God to remind, to remind some of us and, and to bring revelation knowledge to others. Glory to God. And this book of Numbers, glory to God, is the fourth book of, of the book that Moses had written to the children of Israel. Glory to God. And this book was written by Moses. It was called Numbers because it took two consensus. It took one consensus when they first entered into the uh, the wilderness. And the consensus was how many men that we had that are fit for the army. And then it took a second consensus after 40 years. They were all in the 40th year, glory to God, and Moses decided to take another consensus because all the generations had died off. And who do we have left to fight and to take us to the next level, take us to the next generation, take us across the Jordan River to captivate and to cross over to the promised land? And we come to find out that during the 40 years, the actual number began with 6,439 men. And it ended with 6,001 men. So they got rid of at least, uh, glory to God, 300,000, glory to God, during that time. But the overall message of the book of Numbers is the tragedy of unbelief. The journey from Egypt to the promised land should have taken them no more than 40 days. Some commentators said it should have taken them 11 days. It was really an 11 day journey. That's right. <laughs> wow. But 40 days at the most. But instead, it took the people 40 years. <laughs> the delay was because of their unbelief. <laughs> Just because they did not believe. They were right there in Kadesh. Kadesh was the Lord's God. The when they saw the flowing of the, 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 the fruit and the honey and the milk, they, they saw the flowing, but they allowed to allow their sisters to get involved. They saw giants in the land. God didn't mention nothing about giants because God knew that the giants could not do have anything to do with them not receiving the promise. Once God spoke it, they got all focused. But guess what? Here we are today in the book of Numbers chapter 20. And it says, the children of Israel, they came to Kadesh one more time. Let get going to God. I'm going to tell you something, people of God. That when God wants to do something in you, no matter where you go and where you may end up, God will take you back to that place. They started off in Kadesh. And 40 years later, right near when we talk about chapter 20, God brought them back to that same place. Uh -huh. Wow, take your name and there's no shortcut with God. There's no shortcut with God. Hallelujah. I don't care how saved, sanctified. I don't care how many gifts you have and how talented and skillful, intellectual, how many degrees you have. You cannot shortcut God. Take your name, you can't shortcut him. Hallelujah. 
So there's a time when God has allowed on his calendar the left that we're going to be in a specific situation. Mm, glory to God. So here we are, glory to God, in this time frame. Do you feel that you are stuck one more time at that same place that you felt that you go with God, you begin with God? Yep. Do you feel like that God put you back at that place again in that world? Anybody can be honest and truthful. Anybody ever say to God, how did I get yes. here again? Yes. I thought I got over this. I, I thought you delivered me. I, I yes. thought I would never see this place yes. again. How did I get here again at this place of good God, of helpless and hopeless and isolated yes. and loneliness, and a place that I feel uncomfortable again? trapped between where you are and where you want to be and you ask yourself would I ever get out of here uh -huh. when things will ever change in my life yeah. oh will I ever get rid of this place of pain and struggle this place of attitude problems and this place of torment in my mind and this place of anger would I ever get over this God how long I've been coming to church year after year singing in the choir at the door, preaching, teaching God, will I ever get over some of these things? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever ask God that? Say so. Hallelujah, glory to God. I believe that recovery or deliverance cannot happen until we are willing to look at ourselves in the mirror and say, I'm a mess. I'm going to go, I need some work in me. Me when when I stop, I say, "Tell me, stop 
blaming others for your unhappiness. Stop blaming others. Glory to God because you're stuck in a rut. Glory to God. When we stop blaming others, glory to God, we will be able to cross over and receive the blessings that God had for us. People come to realize that people who blame other people never recover because they are in a state of denial. Yes. They, they never recover because they're in a state of denial of who they are and the part they play. Glory to God. I, I believe, glory to God, that anytime you blame another person for your problem or for your attitude, you give that person control over your life. You give them, you let, you let them say, you are master me because you, you control my attitude. You control everything about me. Glory to God. But tell your neighbor, take back, glory to God, who you are in Christ. Don't let no one master your attitude and master you. With your blame, you're saying that I can't come out until you let me out. I can't succeed until you allow me to succeed. I can't move forward in my, in my life until you give me the green light. When you blame someone, you say, I can't be happy until you make me happy. I want, what human being will get another human being that much control over their life? Mm. Tell your neighbor, you're not my creator. <laughs> you didn't care for me. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. But I thank God, glory to God. Unless we are able to accept the responsibility of our own actions and our own behavior, we will never enter to, into the promised land. Why? Because God is too wise. He is too knowing. He is too loving to put you in a destiny into the to put your destiny in the hands of somebody else. Why would God take you in the promised land and you are still controlled by other people? 